Well, good morning again. Are we are we good and woke up? Ready to go? Just in case we do any of that weird interactive stuff where you like actually have to use your voice and maybe your head a little. All right, today's title is a easy one to keep up with and it's also one that is very beneficial. It's already been mentioned a couple times a little bit. Look and listen. Look and listen. Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For assuredly, I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it. And hear what you hear and did not hear it. Matthew 13, 16 and 17. That's, that's what we're, we're building off of today. And we pray for that all the time, don't we, in this church? I mean, I know, I know several times, me personally, I have. I've heard Matt do it. I've heard Ray do it. I've heard a lot of us pray for eyes to see and ears to hear. Why do we do that? Don't answer it. We'll come back to it. Do we know that when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we became new creations, right? We've, we've discussed that before, 2 Corinthians, is it 5.17? The old is gone, here's the new. It, it wasn't just this, you know, down and up thing. Every part of us was new. Every single part. Every part was excelled, accelerated, added, taken from just this earthly piece of flesh to this, this spiritual being. And a big part of that was we were given spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. We were, we were given kingdom vision in hearing. When, when, we were, when we became these new creatures. God did that so we could be in tune with him in the things that he's doing. He did that so we could experience his presence and see his work in our lives. It, it wasn't this, this aimless thing, like I'm, I'm gonna, they've got 2070 vision, I'm gonna give them 2020. No, it, it goes far beyond that. How many of us have been in a situation prior to being a saved person where you knew there was something to it? Like, man, this doesn't happen. There's something to this. This, this is trippy. This is weird. This is freaky. Whatever. However you articulate it. And you become a saved person, and years down the line, this memory comes back and hits you, and you're like, oh, that, that was God at work in my life. Before I ever even submitted to him, he was, he was doing these things. Well, now that we've got this kingdom vision, now we can look back at those things and see God's work in our lives. But from that moment on, we have the ability to do that. We can see his work. We can hear it. We can feel it. We can experience it and be a part of it. We're blessed to be a part of it. These senses have to be developed during our walk with Christ. Spiritual sensitivity to God and His kingdom it isn't something that you just accept. Salvation, you accept it. With spiritual sensitivity, you accept it, but you have to exercise it. Have we ever got out of practice with using our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears and we just start missing stuff? Let's look at Matthew 13, 14 and 15. Verses 14 and 15. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, 
and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. Without spiritual eyes and without spiritual ears, you can be right there while God is working. You can be present while God is performing a miracle. You can be present while the kingdom of heaven is expanding. You can be in the same room as someone receiving salvation. You can bear witness to a prodigal returning home and miss it, not recognize it, not even know that it happened without those spiritual eyes and ears that God gave you. Who wants to miss it? Who wants to miss these blessings and these favors and this work of God in our lives? But we do it. Each and every one of us do it. Here's that weird interactive stuff. Would you agree there is a rather large difference between our earthly senses and kingdom senses? Would you agree? Raise your hand if you'd agree. Raise your hand if you disagree. I like easy questions because it keeps everybody on the same page. Plus, they're the only ones I get right, so. There's, there's a huge, huge difference between these sets of senses. If you don't believe me, look back at your own life or just look at people who aren't saved today. Look how the world the loss, look how some of these people react to world events. And we can, it's easy, it's a lot easier for me to draw off my own experience, so that's what I'll do. Look at how people react when they're a part of the world and not a part of the kingdom. What do you do? Nine times out of ten, you get in this situation, you're seeing stuff, you're reacting to it, and what do you do? You pause, you sit, you wait. What are we doing? Nine times out of ten, we're waiting to see what this dude or this chick does, and we're going to see what happens to them. Like I'm just going to kind of sit back and wait. and Ooh, Don't do that. We, we wait to see what somebody else does first. We sit there stammered and confused because you're part of a lost and dying world. You don't have the leading of God in your life. It's like that. It was like that prior to us being saved. And it's like that for the lost world now. Stunned, confused, dazed, in a haze, however you want to say it, they're stuck and they're waiting for someone else to make a move. We serve a God who's already made a move. We, we, we don't have to do that. As a saved member of the kingdom of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, as a saved person, we don't, we don't have to wait. We don't sit there confused. We, we don't wait to see what happens to somebody else because we have fear of what we may do. We already know what to do. Who, who's been there? Who, who, can, who can say, like, yeah, I've, I've been there, even as a saved person. I've been in a place where I've been hit by something that's happened in my life, whether it be an event, circumstance, something, and we're just... It, it's probably more than likely because we've... Our, our vision's got a little, a little cruddy. Our, our hearing isn't as good as it should be. People who are spiritually sensitive see the hand of God at work and adjust according to that. We're not reacting to the event. We're not reacting to the circumstance. We're reacting to the hand of God. And we adjust according to his will if we're obedient. We do not have to wait and see what anybody else does. Because we know God's got it. 
The world waits to see what somebody else does, but as saved people, what should we do? Here's another weird interactive part. Get ready for it. When God says jump, what should your response be? How high? (laughs) When God says jump, we should say how high, but there's too many of us that are waiting to see how someone else is jumping. Well, how well do they do? Can that dude barely touch the net, or can he 360 tomahawk throw it down? There's too many of us that wait, and we don't need to act as the rest of the world does when we're a saved people who knows that God's got it. Whenever God God tells you to jump, he knows what your vertical is, and he might not want that dude with a 42-inch vertical. He might want that dude with an 18-inch vertical. That might be what's needed right then. So when he says jump, we need to say how high, and we need to do it. There's no waiting. We have to know that God's got it. When you are tuned in, you can see the work of God. And like I said earlier, you can be a part of it. Do we realize how blessed we are to be a part of the work of God? Does he need our help? No. He does not need our help. But are we blessed to be a part of it? If he calls us to work, is that not a blessing to our life? We should treat it like that. Let's look at a couple situations, and I've got just a few. We'll, we'll go through them quick, but let's look at how an earthly friend helps out in these situations versus a member of the kingdom and how they should help in a given situation. So the first predicament is a rough day. Who's had a rough day? These are pretty generic and easy, so they should be effective because we've all dealt with them. Everyone's had a rough day. What does that member of earth, that member of the lost, that sympathetic sinner, what's their advice on a rough day? And I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to draw off my own experience. Let's, let's go out for a drink. Let's, let's get our mind off of it. Let's, let's go out for a drink. Let's go party. Blah, 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 blah. Versus a member of the kingdom. Hey, man, what, why'd you have a rough day? When did it start? Then what? You, you talk through it. You talk all the way through. Then you pray through it. You lay hands on this person and you pray for them. And that rough day, who in here has been in one of those positions where one of your roughest days is one of the days where you had to draw the most from God and your closeness and your intimacy with him was better from that moment on. That is something that a member of the lost world cannot tell you, but a member of the kingdom should. So what about that bad feeling? Who in here has ever had one of them bad feelings? You have absolutely no reason why. It's not like you just did this and this and this, and we, yeah, I know why I have a bad feeling. You wake up, things are going good, Bam, you get hit with this bad feeling. What does that sympathetic sinner say? Probably the same thing as the rough day. Hey, man, let's go have a drink. Let's go smoke a whatever kids smoke these days. I, I don't know. There, because what does the lost world say? And I, and, I, and I said this when I was a lost person. Man, it's just, it's just a bad feeling. You know, just get over it. If you don't know what's causing it, It's probably not a big deal. Where a saved person is going to reach down deep, they're going to pray, they're going to search the word, and we're going to figure out what this is together. And if we can't, then we know it's an attack from the enemy. And we're going to bind him up with the power and authority of the name of Jesus, bind him up, bind his army up, bind his demons, and with the power and authority of the name of Jesus Christ, we're going to cast him to the pit, and that feeling's gone. Big difference. What about feeling guilty? And I'm using, I'm using earthly terms here. You're feeling guilty. Just cheated on your wife. Your sympathetic sinner buddy, he's going to justify it. He's going to defend you. He's going to say, man, you, you tried and tried and tried. You don't deserve the way she treats you. You, you deserve this. 
that she pushed you to this. Very often, a sympathetic sinner is going to justify what you did by any means necessary and make you feel better about what you did. And by George, nothing's your fault. It's not my fault. Whereas a kingdom person is going to say, hey, buddy, you ain't feeling guilty. You're feeling convicted. Let's figure out why. And when we figure it out, let's come up with a plan. Let's search the word of God and figure the way out of this that God ordains. Not us. We'll mess it up. And we can praise Jesus together when we're back on the right track. What about not knowing what to do? That sympathetic sinner is going to tell you to do whatever feels right, whatever feels good, whatever's the path of least resistance. When a member of God knows that the path that you might take might be the hardest stinking one there is. But if we pray about it and we have peace about it, that's what we know we ought to do. That is why we pray for eyes to see and ears to hear, so that we can see and hear and know the work and experience the presence of God. In order to to feel things spiritually, we've got to have these spiritual eyes and ears turned on. we've We've got to toss away the earthly and live in this spiritual. It's two totally lives. And in order for us to experience the spiritual side of it, this stuff's got to be working. It's got to be developed. It's got to be, it's got to be right. It's got to be exercised. We pray for it so that we can... What, what are the, the two big things God says? There's the Ten Commandments, but then for folks like me, it, it gets... There's a summarized version. Love God, love your neighbor. Do we think if our spiritual eyes and ears were turned on all the time that we could love God and love our neighbors better? So that's another reason that we pray, for eyes to see and ears to hear. What's another reason? So that we can better serve God and so that we can better serve others. If Matt's having trouble with something and I go over with earthly means and say, you know, hey, let's knock this out. He's working on, you're working on a carport shed shop thing right now, right? I come over, I bring some tools, I bring some two by fours, we knock out some work in four hours and I go to the house. Is that helpful? We can still be helpful. But what if I go over there and that four hours of work turns into six hours and we work for four hours, but for two hours, we really get down to something spiritual that has been anchoring Matt down. That has been holding him back. If I go over there with earthly eyes and ears just set to work and I leave my spiritual eyes and ears at the house, I've missed out on the work of God. I've missed out on a blessing for him and for myself. I've missed out on a chance to be obedient when God is called because I didn't hear it and then when I got there I didn't see it. That is why we pray for eyes to see and ears to hear. Y'all, just so you know, I've been thinking all morning, I'm going to get that wrong. I'm going to jack that up. I'm going to say eyes to hear and ears to see. I've been, I've been. That's why we pray for it. And we know, and we have talked in great detail about the enemy in the world and the things that they will attempt to distract us, right? Right? Was it just two weeks ago we were talking about the distractions of the enemy and the ways that he's going to try to get a foot in if we'll let him? The things that the world and the enemy will do to try to drown out the voice of God, to muddy up the image of God, to try to bog down and clutter our lives so that we can't go be active for God. We've talked about that in detail, have we not? Guess what? We're we're not going to talk about it any further than that this morning. We're going to focus on us. Not, Not the attempts, not the attacks by the enemy or the world. 
We're going to talk about us and the control that we have because we do. Sin dulls your spiritual senses. I'm going to say it again. Sin will dull your spiritual senses. And it will ultimately ultimately leave you blind and deaf if you let it. That is exactly why at the end of verse 15, there in Matthew 13, at the very end of 15, what's it say? Their heart, turn their hearts and, sh- and be healed. So, so can we say that, yeah, we've messed up. We've probably got something in our ears. We've probably got something in our eyes. We've messed up. Sin has dulled our spiritual senses to some degree. Turn your hearts and be healed. When we come up here, when, when we get ready to go into our, our next set of worship, we're going to set our chairs out like we always do. But I'm going to ask you, don't let this be this normal pattern thing, this run-of-the-mill routine that we always do with the same two or three people that, that pray. Break down, turn on your spiritual eyes and ears this morning, focus on God and nothing else, and come up here today. If you need to be forgiven, which we do, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're in your seat, if you're at, at the altar, if you're in one of the chairs to get prayed for, it doesn't matter where you're at. See God, hear God, invite his presence in. If you are tired of blurry vision, come up here this morning. If you are tired of people having to repeat things to you, I mean, it's getting to a point for some of us that God is sitting there like, wake up, because we're not hearing, we're not seeing. If you're tired of bad vision and bad hearing, come up here and be healed. Turn your heart and be healed. I want... I want everyone in here today, not, not for me, for you. I want to see that joy when people leave out of here with eyes to see and ears to hear. I want us to leave with just being, being filled with the presence of God. I want little fires started or big fires. I I want people to leave here today ready to radically change the world that they live in, radically going to have an impact on the kingdom of God. Each and every person in here has that potential. If we'll have eyes to see and ears to hear, if we'll be obedient to it. We said sin dulls senses. So I, I spoke earlier about these four scenarios where a sympathetic sinner may be lending to advice to somebody. When our sins get dulled down, we're giving that same advice. When we're not tuned in, when we're not spiritually sensitive, we're, we may not be given what God wants either. So that's why I say today, come up here and be healed. Let's get our, our spiritual sensitivity back. We talk about it Often, I mean, we, we want revival, we want change, and we want to see this big, huge thing, but how does it start? Oftentimes, it starts small, but the four scenarios where a kingdom person was given advice, rough day, bad feeling, feeling guilty, didn't know what to do, those are everyday situations, right? If more people were giving kingdom advice, Instead of sympathetic sinner, earthly advice, would that be a radical change in this world? Would it have an impact on the kingdom of God? So like I said, if you're, if you're tired, if you are sick and tired of having a muddied up image of God, of not hearing his voice, of sitting in your chair with your hands out to receive 
and never hearing anything over and over, turn your heart and be healed. Be cleansed. And let's get ready to see some radical change. I can't wait to see it. This world needs the people of God to live for God more than it ever has. And as that, I've, I hate it. I listen to worship music so much, like half the words that come out of my mouth, I want to say, from that song, from that song. It's got to start right here. It's got to start right now. But it's true. It does have to start right here. It has to start in the heart of each and every person who knows and trusts and is, is a follower of the Almighty God. If we'll start living like that and we'll stay tuned in and we'll have this spiritual sensitivity that we've talked about this morning, this world cannot help but change. And I'm going to tell you, I, I talked to a buddy of mine last week after we sent out the YouTube video, and he was like, dude, I had no idea you were doing that. That's awesome. He was like, I, I listen to stuff. He's got like an hour drive to work now. But he was like, I listen to you and, like, he started rattling off really, really good pastors. And I was like, hmm. It's like, well, it's safe to say I'm the worst out of all them dudes. But he, 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 lended, he lended encouragement. But he also reminded me of something, and it's something I wanted to run by us today, especially when we're talking about being spiritually sensitive. Be prepared. The Bible says that people are going to hate us because we love him, right? I'm, I'm, like, I'm almost begging and pleading with you all. Talk to somebody this week about Jesus Christ. Reach out to somebody this week about your Savior and about what he's done for you. It is great to walk them through salvation. It's great to tell them about the Gospels. Is there a Gospel of Danny Petens? Is there a Gospel of Gene? We can also share what God has done in our lives personally, and that is real and it's tangible and it's easy for somebody to hold on to. But I want to remind you that it says that people are going to hate us. You're going to be rejected. Get over it. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. You're going to have a lot of people that don't want to talk to you. You're going to have a lot of people that maybe say something bad to you. Like, well, you're offensive. That's offending me that you want to talk to Jesus about me. I'm good enough. Get over it. Listen, if you talk to 100 people about Jesus Christ and one of them gets saved, did you waste any time? Ray Mel, in the 13 years since you and me have known each other, how many people have you talked to about God? A ton. We'll just, I know you're not, you and me ain't counters. We're not mathletes. And I'm talking in our age group because I know you're the youth pastor because you're constantly talking. But when we, were, when we were growing up, how many people did you talk to about God that are still here today? few. Look at the few that are here, though, that were a part of us, our, our youth group. Two back here, two here, two here-ish, here. There are people that are still here, and you know, so, so many times people get wrapped up in the numbers of people coming to church, our, our, our numbers growing. I just, I'm just glad our people are growing. I don't care if we have one person here or a hundred. Are we, were we, are we closer to God now than we were a month ago? Is it worth it? Of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven in this room that are, are in our age group that we, we were youths around the same time. How many more people have been in here as a youth member that you and me have talked to that are not in here. For the six or seven that are in here, there's probably two, three hundred that aren't. That's their decision. And if they don't have spiritual eyes and they don't have spiritual ears, they might not hear it. They might not see it. 
But as it said, we are blessed because prophets and righteous men have tried to see what we see, and they don't, but we do. We have that. We have spiritual eyes. We have spiritual ears. Let's, let's tune into it and, and live for the kingdom. I can't, I can't wait to see just, just how it looks because it's not about the church numbers. It's about the joy and the growth and the love that we have right here. And when I say right here, I'm not talking about these four walls. Family. I love it. So let's live for that. Let's, let's tune in. But, but right now, let's, be, let's turn our hearts and be healed if that's what we need.